Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right, all right. Hey, everybody. So today's May 11th. Welcome to the show, all you drivers and gig workers out there figuring out the new normal. This is the new normal. The new normal. I'd like to get a freaking haircut. That's what I'd like. That's what I don't like about the new normal. I actually found someone. She was going to cut my hair on Friday. I drove 30 minutes to get to her shop, and she sent me an email and said she had a family emergency and couldn't make it. I was like, oh my God, I just want to get a haircut. Everyone, everyone else who I'm offering to pay good money for says they can't do it because of the uh, pandemic. I'm like, my God, let's put on some masks, some gloves, and let's do this. You can cut my hair. I'll pay you $100. <laughs> just cut my freaking hair. Anyway, my hair's still not cut. I'm hoping uh, somebody gets back to me today. So, totally a first world problem. Yeah, uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind having first world problems. I want to get my hair cut. How are you doing out there? Out there in the world, surviving the COVID-19 pandemic. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at some news stories. Some interesting things are happening out there in the world. Maybe I can shed some light on a few things. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of news to share with you today. This first one comes from the Huff Post. The Huff Post. And this is dated May 8th, last Friday. Governors cut off new unemployment benefits before some people even get checks. Subtitled, there's a plague outside, but some states think it's urgently necessary for people to go to work. So what are they doing? They are saying that uh, if, you're, if your state has opened up and your type of business is now allowed to open again, then you can't apply for unemployment benefits. And the example they used uh, here is a woman, uh, a massage therapist in Springdale, Springdale, Arkansas. She stopped working in March. Um, and uh, that's when, you know, things were shut down then. And then uh, I guess the massage therapy, mas the, the salons are now able to open. So if you were to uh, say, I can't work next week because of the COVID-19, uh, you would not get accepted because your business could be open. Now, if you had some other reason, I suppose, uh, uh, you know, you could still get it. Um, and she says, going back to work and coming back in contact with everybody else's bubble kind of makes me nervous, she said. Yeah, so this is a bit forceful, I would have to say. I, I kind of agree with her. Um, because, you know, you fear for your life. You know, this thing does kill people. And just because uh, the government has told you now you can go back to work, uh, you know, you got to use your common sense. And, uh, you know, perhaps it makes sense not to work. And even if you don't get unemployment benefits uh, for a week or two, while things sort of um, settle, settle down a bit. But for those of us who are drivers, that's interesting. What if they say, uh, you know, that uh, in your state, you know, you can go back to driving. 
right? They've uh, they've opened up the uh, you know the economy enough that they're not going to accept it as an excuse that you can't drive because of COVID nineteen. You know, that's that's what's coming, and I think it's coming sooner than a lot of us thought. Right? We're supposed to be able to get these uh, nice fat unemployment benefits until the end of July. We're only at the you know the first half of May, and uh, that's two and a half months away. I don't think we're going to last two and a half months. I think in two and a half months, the economy is going to be back. Even if more people are dying, um, there's a big uh, you know, rush to get the economy opening back up. So that's a very interesting uh, dilemma a lot of us are going to face. Do we want to go out and drive, right, to make money even uh, and realize we're not going to be able to claim unemployment benefits because of the COVID-19? Or are you not going to drive, not get the benefits, and find something else to do? I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, and I'll stay on top of that uh, as we as we go through this together. Okay, this next article, this has to do with uh, loan forgiveness. So there's a type of loan that uh, drivers have been able to apply for called the PPP loan. It comes out of the Small Business Administration, the SBA. PPP is for Paycheck Protection Program, and it's designed to uh, allow you to pay yourself for two and a half months of your payroll, paying it to yourself. Now, there's definitely some questions about whether you can accept PPP and the unemployment as well. Um, I think if you do get the PPP, you should stop the unemployment at that point. Uh, for two and a half months, and then you could pick it back up. Or um, or you could go back and say the PPP covers you for, say, February and March, and then the unemployment is going to cover you from April, May, June, and July. That would probably get more money into your pocket. There's no hard and fast rules. All of this is happening very fluidly. So again, we're just going to um, stay on top of it. But it says counting on loan forgiveness. Many companies... Um, aren't going to be able to, to, to pay 75% of their loan to, to payroll, right? They have other expenses, more pressing uh, expenses to cover. In that case, they're not going to be able to get their whole loan forgiven. For those of us who are independent contractors and the money is going 100% to us, I think we're in pretty, pretty good shape because how can they argue that that's not payroll, right? That's all 100% of the money is going for payroll. So um, this article doesn't really apply to us. Um, But I do encourage you to apply uh, for a PPP loan if you haven't yet, because uh, there may be another round of of funding and uh, it's it's worth uh, it's worth giving it a shot. Spend an hour of your time and uh, see if you can get something. Okay, this next article is called self-employed with no employees. Can you still get a PPP loan? Well, that that the answer is yes. Um, Key concepts that this article points out. Being an independent contractor means you're a small business owner or sole proprietor. That's us. Receiving one or more 1099s constitutes being an independent contractor. That's us. As an independent contractor or sole proprietor, you would file a Schedule C with your tax return. Paying workers with a 1099 is not having employees. If you did not, if you did have employees, you, you would issue W-2s and pay employment taxes and workers' comp. You can have a limited liability company and still be a sole proprietor or an independent contractor. So this, you know, this article, which is written by Entrepreneur Magazine, explains to you, you know, how you can calculate what you could get um, in terms of PPP. Okay. All right. Next article. Uber. Wow. Uber is going to require drivers and riders to wear face coverings in the U.S. Okay. And there's a picture of Dara K. So this really begs the question of, uh, are we employees of Uber or are we independent contractors? Typically, an independent contractor can determine, you know, which equipment they're going to use, what protective gear they're going to use, all things like that. And here, Uber is basically treating us like employees and telling us exactly how we have to protect ourselves from the virus. There's no option here. You wear a mask or you don't drive. Those are your two options here. And I'm sure Lyft will follow suit um, as well. Um, and it's not just uh, it's not just drivers, but also riders um, are going to have to wear face coverings in the U.S. Now it does make sense, and I, I, I well, the jury's kind of out on this. I got to say, I just heard Dr. Fauci 
um, this morning saying, you know, the only people that really should be wearing masks are frontline, you know, frontline workers, you know, the people who are, you know, doctors and nurses and all of that, people who are dealing with sick individuals, that the masks, masks aren't that effective at um, protecting us. So the jury's definitely out. But if I were to drive, I guess that's a question you can ask yourself out there, uh, dear listener. If you're a driver for Uber or for Lyft, um, would you wear a mask? And would you, would you insist that your passengers also wear a mask? Let me think about that. Well, I don't, you know, the, the jury's out. I'd have to do a little more research on this. Maybe I'll do a podcast about mask or no mask. Because if there's no medical reason to do it, I absolutely would not wear it. They are hot. They're they they're very distracting, um, and uh, yeah, I just find them really. I, I do not like wearing them. You know, I just don't like wearing them. I haven't worn them very much, so maybe if I wore it more frequently, um, like right now, I wear it when I go to a grocery store. You know, if I'm around people, but other than that, I don't, I don't, I don't like, to, I don't like to wear the mask at all. So, but that's the law. There you go. Uber requires drivers and riders to wear face coverings in the U.S. And that's from CNN Business. All right. Well, Lyft is next article from uh, onenewspage.com. Lyft is laying off nearly 1,000 employees, 17% of its workforce, as the coronavirus sends ride-hailing industry into a nose dive. So it cut 1,000 jobs and it's furloughing another 300 jobs. Um, so that's that's one. And then we go and we see what Uber did last week. Today will be your last working day with Uber, they were told on a Zoom call. Um, watch as choked up executives tell 3,500 rideshare employees they are being laid off effectively immediately over a three-minute Zoom call. So this is from the uh, Daily Mail. At least 3,500 Uber employees learned that they were being laid off in a three-minute Zoom call last week. Daily Mail obtained the video of the call where Ruffin Chavalo, head of Uber's customer service, broke the news. We're eliminating 3,500 frontline customer support roles. The cuts were being made among customer support and recruiting teams, meaning driver number will be largely unaffected. Um, a former Uber employee who has to remain anonymous slammed the company for laying off so many people on a Zoom call and for the lack of notice. Well, come on. You just can't expect that Uber's going to treat you well when you see how they treat the drivers. My God, you should you should not be surprised if you work for Uber that you're going to get the shaft. Um, not a lot of loyalty there. Not a lot of loyalty. So that's... Uh, that's what's going on over at Uber and Lyft, and that's the news that I've got to share with you today. So, uh, you know, keep doing your thing out there. Keep uh, keep on keeping on. I think that um, I, I, I commented today about how um, we have to learn acceptance. We're all being taught a great lesson in, in the, um, the emotional state of uh, acceptance where we can just uh, accept things as they are, see things very clearly, and then and then respond accordingly. But there's just some things you cannot change, and this pandemic is one of them. And it's not going away, and this is a, probably at minimum a two-year a two-year process. So uh, accept it. You know, stay informed. Keep checking out this uh, podcast. I'll keep you informed as best I can, and uh, you know we'll get through this together. All right. All right. That's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every day. I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. If you have a story to tell, uh, hit me up um, at uh, nomadj.com. Send me a message and um, you know we'll, uh, we'll talk and see if we can get you on the show. This is Jay Crater, also known as Nomad J, saying this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. 
Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.